Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at the chat feature of Microsoft Teams that we've not really been through much before now. So we're going to go through the basics, some of the limitations, how to pin chats, keep things in your favourites, go through some of the tabs and also look at where files are stored in the background. So remember to subscribe, we've got a new Teams video coming out every Tuesday and hit the bell icon so you get notified about when that comes out and without further ado, Let's get into Teams and take a look at chat. Okay, so let's get into Teams. I've set up a chat with my personal email account just because I'm going to have to blur out quite a lot of um, the sidebar in this video because it is my day job organization teams that I'm using to this video and there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't want you to see so hopefully it'll still make sense. So the chat is obviously in the left hand menu chat and this is where everything's private by default one-to-one -one or in group chats but I guess the opposite of the teams bit of teams where everything is public by default to the entire team. This is in chat you know absolutely who's going to see your message and who isn't. So start a new chat, there's this little icon up here, which quite a few of our um, users miss actually. You can do Control or Command N to start a new chat like you would in any other uh, program. And if you just start chatting in the box, you can see first difference to the Teams bit of Teams is that there is no threaded conversation. So everything in the chat is just posted. You can't do a thread, which not sure really why they've done that, but it would be useful, I think, for some of the group chats. We've still got all the same functions down here as you would. Um, you can still attach files. The files upload is cut down, so you can either link something from your OneDrive and it will stay linked to that file. So only share it from your OneDrive if you want the person you're sharing it with in the chat to be able to amend it and change your original version. You can upload from your computer. So if you did have it in OneDrive, you can upload a copy. And in the background, when you upload a file, I think it moves the file to a different folder in your OneDrive. And we'll come on to that, how that works in group chats a bit later. So it moves it to a different folder and then shares that file with the user that you're chatting with. Still got all the GIFs, emojis, stickers, everything you would do in a normal team. And then any files that you've shared already will appear in the Files tab, um, like they would do in the Teams bit of Teams. And then what I find a bit useful is um, activity. So you can see, if you go into a user's chat, you can see in their activity feed every place that they've put something in Teams as long as you're in the same team. So in multiple Teams, if you're sharing membership of those, it'll appear everywhere that they've posted. So you can see, you see, you know, quite useful to go back and if you think, oh, I know Ben's sent something in the team, but I can't remember where, I think it'll show by default the last two weeks all the posts they've ever put in and you can jump into the chat um, straight from there. So that's quite useful. And then carrying on working across the top, again like in the Teams bit of Teams, you've got the ability to put a tab in. So what we found quite useful is, you know, the usual Office documents, Excel, Word. If you're working on a PowerPoint together, um, you can share it in the chat and then pin it to the top of the chat um, and, and work on it there. If you've got a dashboard, you can keep updating it and, and keep that posted into the chat or if you want to work on something together. So things that are missing from the tabs bit in chat are Planner and Wiki, which we've just done two recent videos on, which I'll link up in the comments below if you want to know more about those. But those aren't available in chat, which is a bit of a shame. Planner needs an Office 365 group, I think, to work. So that's why it doesn't work in chat. Not really sure why couldn't you have a wiki in chat because you have got a personal version of your wiki so it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to share that with somebody else but that's not there unfortunately. You still do have OneNote if you want to share notes with somebody and Stream, Power BI, any website and there's quite a lot of third party um, apps you can put as a tab still not nearly as many as the Teams bit of Teams. So one thing that's quite useful if you've got a lot of chats like I have but if I scroll down you can see it's quite a lot of, um, of chats going on, which is great that everyone's using Teams now instead of Skype for uh, instant messaging. Um, trying to get them to use that instead of email as well. If you click on the three dots next to your chat, 
you can pin it to the top so it takes it out of your recent bucket and moves it up to the top and it stays there. So it's really useful for group chats, which I'll just come on to in a sec. If you want to start a group chat, you can either do it as you start a brand new chat. So you start typing someone's name uh, and then just keep adding the names. If you click this little down icon at the top, you can then name the group chat just like you would in WhatsApp or any other uh, consumer messaging app. So sometimes we've taken some like mini projects out of the main team, put it into a group chat, worked on it and then gone back out and presented it back to the to the main team just because it's stuff that we didn't really want people to have an input into or you know want to do something in a bit bit more privacy and then it's useful to, to name a group chat so everyone knows what that chat is for and then also pin it to the top so your it doesn't get lost out of your recent history so pinning's really useful let's jump into contacts again which have to blur out and um, it's got the favorites so it's a bit more like skype used to be where you can click on the group and then add contacts to this group just start typing someone's name pop up if they're in your Azure AD group and just add them into your favorites. And then you can also create a new, a brand new group. So um, I've not set this up. I don't find it that useful in Teams now. When I was, used to use Skype, I used to have groups of people. So like finance be grouped together, um, you know, sales would be grouped together and keep people grouped like that. Now that um, I've moved over to Teams, I found pinning the chats a lot easier. Um, to keep track of things and actually you can just start typing someone's name up in the search bar and it'll just start sending them a chat anyway so you don't really need to go back through and find them but the favorites is quite handy to keep my boss in there so you can just quickly get him or anyone else that you would usually message one-to-one -one quite quickly so jumping back to sharing files quickly whilst we're talking about group chats as i mentioned when you upload a file or share a file from your onedrive Either way, it's uh, it's linking back to your OneDrive. So if you share a file that's not in your OneDrive, it'll put it into your OneDrive and then share that file with the people on the chat. Uh, so if it's a group chat, I'll share it with everyone that's on that on that specific chat and nobody else. Um, what we have found people doing is getting um, frustrated, stroke confused about wanting to either share a file for, that's already in the team in private chat, which you can kind of do or the opposite sharing a file from private chat into the team and then getting confused about why that's difficult and why they can't do it i can't think of many use cases why you really would need to do that and presuming microsoft haven't either but as is the case if people can break something they probably will at some point so the one of the examples where they want to share a file from the team into private chat you can jump into the team go to the files tab click the three dots next to the file, get link and post that into a chat. That way works, but obviously the file doesn't appear in the files bit of the chat because it's not in that chat, it's just a link. So that doesn't appear there. Um, there's no way of linking direct to a team from the paperclip icon. But I guess it does blur what permissions that file has got. So, but yeah, if you want to link a file into the private chat, into the team, then that does work, but then everyone needs to know that that link is going back to a public document. You're not working on it privately, just with the people in the chat. For those, it's better to, like I said, link in your OneDrive and upload from your computer. So where the opposite was true, I think they were working as a group on something and then wanted to put it into the team, but then got confused about why you couldn't just move that directly. So I guess if you've already got it in your files, it is stored in someone's OneDrive. So if I shared a file into a group chat, that gives access to everybody else that's in the chat. It doesn't then let you move it from a group chat or even an individual chat into the team, because I guess then you're breaking the permissions. So even if you're the person that's done it, I guess you would have it in your OneDrive anyway, you need to upload it into the team and it would become a version on SharePoint as part of the team and then permissions would be given to the entire team. If someone else, if I shared a file into the group chat and then someone else wanted to send that on, which has happened in real life, then also they're getting frustrated slash confused about what, why they can't just send someone a link to that file, why, why I've got to download it and send it on. It seems counterintuitive. It's like, well, again, the permissions are just to the people from my OneDrive that's been shared. You can't then share it on because I need, I'm the person that's owning that file uh, in my OneDrive. So, Again, best to either 
add the, another person to that chat, which is the best way, because then it's visible to everybody in the group chat that you're sharing it with somebody else. Or if you really want to, same as email, you could download the file, you've then got your own offline version and then send it on to anyone else that you you want. So hopefully that was a good little whistle stop tour of chat. We've not really talked about it much, uh, going from basics to quite advanced sharing of files, stuff that we have seen in real life. So hopefully it might be useful. Uh, it might just be our users that have uh, come across that. So um, yeah, hopefully that was good. If you liked it, remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already and share it with somebody that you think might be able to use the tips here. What do you think of Teams Chat? Is there anything else that you want to know about it? Or any other features that you think Microsoft should include? Let us know in the comments below. And then at me time, we think Teams is a great piece of software. The chat functionality is amazing. It's cut down so much time and cut out meetings for us, which is the best way to save time in meetings. If you are going to have a meeting, we really recommend you check out our app in the uh, iOS app store. It's a meeting timer for iPhone that's designed specifically for meetings to help you keep your meetings on track. And we'd really like it if you went and checked that out for us. It's linked to the app store and the website if you want to find out more in the comments below. So thanks very much for watching this far and we'll see you in the next video.